generative AI audio tools, open source game engines, micro mentoring is back in time for GitHub Universe, and the answer to the question that you all want to know the answer to, which is, will I be buying the new iPhone? All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So my shirt this week is a GitHub shirt. You can get your own similar shirt at thegithubshop.com. And you know where else you can get GitHub merch? That's right. GitHub Universe, which is just like seven weeks away, I think. GitHub Universe is our annual developer conference, and it will be in San Francisco, California on November 8th and 9th at the Yerba Buena Center of the Arts. I'm going to be there along with tons of other folks, and we want to see you there too. So tickets are available at githubuniverse.com. And if you're a student, be sure to apply for our GitHub Universe micro mentoring sessions. For the fifth year in a row, we are offering students a chance to connect with GitHub employees ahead of GitHub Universe. And so between October 30th and November 7th, we're going to be having multiple 30-minute one-on-one sessions that pair a student with a GitHub employee. And you can ask about career pathing advice or you know, feedback on a project, whatever you want. Applications must be received by 5 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday, September 27th. So if you're interested, please apply now. I love that we do this every year, and I wish that I'd had these opportunities like this when I was a student. Again, all the details are linked below for GitHub Universe and to apply for the micro mentoring sessions. Moving forward with some AI news this week, Stability AI, the company that brought us Stable Diffusion, is back with a new generative audio tool called Stable Audio. And similar to the way that Diffusion models have allowed for generative images, Stable Audio uses a similar approach but to generate audio using natural language prompts. And so you can actually try the tool out for free at stableaudio.com. And I've played with it, and it's, it's pretty cool. But what I think is more exciting is the news that Stability AI says basically stay tuned for upcoming releases from its audio research lab, Harmon AI. Um, and, and then that's going to include open source models based on stable audio and training code that will allow you to train your audio generation model um, on your own stuff. But in the meantime, you can check out the sample that I made using this prompt. Indie lo-fi guitar and strings, calming, soothing with some drums and bass. Not bad, right? All right, I'm gonna be honest. I was able to completely break this thing and make some truly, truly terrible sounding audio. And you're actually also gonna wanna check out the terms and conditions before you use this thing in any of your own projects or music. But no cap, I'm still super excited to see what comes next, especially if we get some open source tools for our own train models, because I think this has a lot of potential. I've got links down below to the Stability AI blog post and Stable Audio itself. Earlier this summer, Meta, the company that I will always call Facebook, introduced Threads, their take on, well, X, the service that I will always call Twitter. And Threads is a short form messaging platform. It's, it's basically Twitter. It's Twitter is what it is. But it uses Instagram's login system, um, but it has its own uh, network and, and separate network. Last week, the Threads team put out a great blog post about how they built Threads, uh, which now has a web app, finally. And unsurprisingly, the stack itself on the back end is really similar to Instagram's, which uses Django and Python. And then they use uh, Swift for the iOS app and Jetpack Compose for the Android app. But what I really love about the blog post is that Jesse Chin goes into detail about how they were able to scale to 100 million users at launch in something like 36 hours. I mean, that's insane. And I really love it when companies or services share the stories about how they built out their services. And I hope that we can get even more details on threads as time goes on, especially since the team is planning on connecting threads to the ActivityPub API that Mastodon and other Fediverse apps use. So I've got a link to this blog post in the links down below, and you can follow me on threads. I'm at film underscore girl. And now it is time for my GitHub project spotlight, where I pick an open source project on GitHub to highlight for everybody else out there. So this week, my pick is Godot, which is an open source game engine for 2D and 3D games. And we've actually mentioned Godot before on this show, and I know that this is a favorite of my friend and colleague Lee Riley, who's up on all the game stuff. 
I'm giving a Godot a shout out for two, uh, for two reasons. One, I think it's awesome. Also, Godot launched a new Godot development fund this week, and the team says that the goal of this fund is to create a direct way for everyone out there to help secure stable funding and ensure the longevity of the project. That's great. Um, this is a way for individuals or for companies to show their support for the project on a monthly basis, and I've got that linked down below alongside the GitHub repo. But the other reason that I want to talk about Godot is because our friends over at Unity, they made a bunch of people mad this week um, with some changes to the way that they are charging for licensing and downloads of apps that use the Unity engine. Look, I'm not going to litigate it all now. It's dramatic. But suffice to say, people are angry. And I just wanted to point out that, hey, there are open source options out there for you, Godot being a great one. So I've got a link to the Godot GitHub repo and the project page down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right. So a little company called Apple had a little event this week for their new phones and watches. That's right, the iPhone Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2 were announced alongside the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, as well as the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. And look, I've been inundated with pings from friends and internet commentators. Like Everyone in the world wants to know, Christina, will you be buying the new iPhone? And the answer, just like every other year since the dawn of time, is yes, of course. This is, this is what I do, this is who I am. That being said, I do have some complaints, so Tim Cook, if you're listening, take some notes. First, I would like to have it known on the record that in a year that Apple finally gave us a proper pink iPhone, I feel personally slighted because that color is not available on the Pro models, like, what the heck? I mean, I'm very mad about this. Also, I'm upset that the pink watch is only available in aluminum and not stainless steel, bummer. But look, we finally have an iPhone with a USB-C port, which not only means one less cable for me to carry around most of the time, you know, unless I'm traveling with my AirPods Max, uh, which still use Lightning, but when I shoot video remotely, it's not gonna take forever to transfer it to my computer. So yes, I'm getting the new iPhone because it has a new port. That's basically the only reason, even though they didn't make a pink one for the model that I want and I'm gonna have to settle for blue, which is boring, but it's fine. Uh, I am gonna pass on upgrade my watch maybe next year, but. Yeah, I'm getting the new iPhone. So that's my pick of the week. Are you going to get the new iPhone? Is USB-C enough to entice you? I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below, but also let me know your thoughts in any of the other stories that we covered. That's going to do it for me. If you liked this episode, please give us a like because it helps the algorithm out and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. I'm going to be out next week because I'm going to see Ben Folds in Washington, DC because that's how old I am. And uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>